So my, my presentation is in two parts. The first is to talk, to just give you a sense of the pressures, because I, I don't think everyone's aware um, of some of the data points, which, which just show how much pressure there is on the community. Um, and then talk about options, because we've seen in other communities what can be done. And then I'm going to talk about what's on the site. So this, this is the first slide. This is um, a census, a snapshot, which was done in 2014 and is over the date range 2001 to 2011. What it shows is that top blue line, um, Brighton community grew. This is not the Jewish community, the overall community grew by about 10% over that period. Brighton, as Tony said, is a very attractive place to live. Um, the second line, the brown line, which is the biggest religious community in um, the Brighton Hove area, the Christian community, that declined by about 20%. Um, and that gives you a sense, I think, of the pressures in general uh, for religious affiliation, not just Jewish, but religious. Uh, and one of the things that is sort of coming out when you, when you see communities which are more successful is that it's not so much that people um, lack religion, they don't. They're not attracted necessarily, certainly the younger community, to just coming to a shul. Shuls need to reinvent themselves. They need to have community assets around the main shul, which can be a magnet for um, across the age range and, and across you know, different, to people's different needs in life to, to be able to be part of a, a community. So what we're trying to create um, with this site is very much aimed at trying to create those assets um, to bring out the natural religious affiliation which exists. Just looking at the Jewish um, numbers in a little more detail. So unfortunately, the Jewish um, uh, religion was the worst of all the religions. It, it, it declined by about 21% between 2001 and 2011, uh, which is the um, brown line. Uh, I, I picked the Muslim population uh, because it was a similar size uh, at the start in 2001. It's now more, or well, in 2011, it was more than double the size of the Jewish community. Our sense is that if you were able to map out this line to 2017, um, it wouldn't be linear, it would be exponential, because you reach a point where um, you know, the, 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 the aging of a population is such that you just don't have birth rates coming through to replace. And by the same token, if you have a younger population, which the Muslim community does, your birth rates go up and you have um, a higher number. So uh, this, this is really, to me, um, a depressing chant because it shows that we are, you know, this is the final chance, as far as I'm concerned, this is the final chance for the community. I think if, if um, New Church Road had sold the site to developers, which, they, you know, they had to try and do something because they were losing so much money, it really would have been the end of the road. So we now have an opportunity to do something very special to try and reverse that. Incidentally, the bottom line there, which is the Orthodox community, has declined at a sharper rate, unfortunately, than the, the Jewish community. And I think wherever you are across the religious spectrum, um, there's an acknowledgement that uh, roots for Judaism are deep within um, an Orthodox community. And, and I think ultimately, unless you have a strong Orthodox community, there won't be a community. So that's very much, again, part of our, our, our kind of philosophy in looking at this scheme is to try and p create a beautiful Orthodox shul at the, at the center of our site. So just to go into the, the details a little bit more, um, numbers, I mean, I'll, I'll come to numbers in a second. It's, they have declined significantly for, for the population. Um, the average age of a member of New Church Road is 72. Uh, the average age of a member at Holland Road is older. I don't know what the number is, but I know it's older. Um, financials, for the last three years, according to Companies House, Holland Road has lost money. Um, New Church Road last year lost over 50,000 pounds. Uh, the, these, this is not sustainable. Something needs to change to change the dynamic and to change the direction of travel. And I mean, I, I'm talking about the Orthodox uh, communities. I, I also know from my, com my conversation with Michael Harris, who we're, I'm quite close to, that Reform Shul has also seen pressures and the Reform Shul is also engaged in its own redevelopment. So again, this is a chance because of the size of the new church road site to bring people together, to bring the whole community together, and whether it's reform or progressive, there's a chance to really embrace this scheme. I just wanted to read you this quote. For some years, Brighton and Hove Hebrew Congregation and the Hove Hebrew Congregation, the two Orthodox Jewish congregations in the Brighton and Hove area, 
have discussed the possibility of merger into one community. The reasons for this are well known. Falling membership due to ageing, integration, lack of religious commitment, rising costs, and pessimism of the future prospects of Orthodox Jewry. The town has three synagogues, sparsely populated for all but a few days of the year. That was written in 1995, 22 years ago. In 1995, we estimate that the combined number of Orthodox members was 1,400. It's now less than 400. So it is really a grave situation. So our message, as Tony said, to Holland Road is please come and join and be part of this. There's a chance now uh, to do what should have been done 40, 50, 60 years ago, and that is to merge into one community. According to the Jewish policy research, um, the average size of a, an Orthodox community, a mainstream Orthodox community in this country, is 247 families. If you put Holland Road and uh, Brighton Hove Hebrew congregation together, you're about that level. So that is about the level you need in order to have a secure minion, to be able to provide children's services and other basics. So it makes sense purely from that perspective. A lot of people say, well, why don't you keep Holland Road as a shul? It's a beautiful shul, and then have communal assets um, on New Church Road. The problem is, Holland Road's been a beautiful shul for 40, 60 years, and it hasn't helped. There has to be a change in dynamic. The situation is so serious that unless the answer to that situation is sufficiently radical, there isn't going to be any change. Having a shul in the center of a communal site is the one opportunity we believe to really create some sort of renaissance in this community. I also wanted to just mention, I don't know if you saw last week, but there was another survey, the British Social Attitudes Survey, which talked about the fall in religious affiliation in this country. And Rabbi Sachs said something very interesting. He said, all of this suggests that religious faith is falling fast, but that is the wrong conclusion. There is a difference between faith and religious affiliation. Traditional services may lack the pace and pulse of the new social media, but that does not mean that they have nothing to offer. To the contrary, we are finding more young people coming to synagogue to find community, a home for their ideals, and respite from the relentless pressure of being online. It's difficult, I think, for young people in this day and age to find community because everyone's so fixated on a screen. So if we can put the right facilities in place, we believe we have a chance. We also have had a chance during this, um, the last couple of years of trying to research what should go onto the site to talk to various other communities across the UK. One of them we spoke to was Leeds, and um, Susie Gordon, who's the executive director of Leeds Rep Council, said the idea is that the shul becomes the center point of our community rather than on the edge, because I feel very strongly that without a shul, we won't have a community because people don't stay or move to a Jewish community if there isn't one, if there isn't a shul, even if they don't attend. I spoke to Susie earlier this week, and she said that there is now a kosher bakery on the shul site, and there's a Moisha house uh, where students can come and stay, and in return for staying and getting free or low-cost accommodation, they then teach the younger members of the, of the community. So again, it's very much along the same thinking of, as, as us. Put accommodation on the site, put, put facilities on the site, and then you have a chance of changing things. Also spoke to Jeff Clements, who um, is part of the Birmingham Central Synagogue. He was desperately disappointed when um, Singers, which is the other Orthodox shul nearby, uh, refused by one, or decided by one vote, they needed a 75% majority, by one vote that his singers decided not to merge, and he, he was devastated by that. Nevertheless, they have taken up their own redevelopment, um, and they have um, created a deli and a community center on the same site uh, in a new redeveloped modern shul building at Central Synagogue. He, he said a few things. He said, communities are about people, not buildings. I think that's the most important thing to remember. Changing needs of the community makes uses of shore buildings very different in 2015 when they did their redevelopment from the past. Update the way your shore is governed to focus on a community center, not just a shore. Regeneration or the last person remaining turn the lights out. So, 
if there is going to be a merger, and people think we're nuts to think that there could be a chance of it because there's been so many lost opportunities over the years, there has to be compromise on all sides. Now, obviously, if Holland Road were to move uh, to New Church Road, they would be making the big sacrifice, the big compromise. But New Church Road is also willing to compromise in a number of areas. So, even though Holland Road has about 40% of the members, um, Tony and I went to present to Holland Road board's board a couple of times earlier this year, and we said to them that uh, there is a willingness for New Church Road to give Holland Road an equal number of board seats on the, um, on the short board. Also, there's a willingness to offer the chairmanship uh, to Stanley Cohen, the chairman of um, Holland Road. Stanley has done a great job um, of administrating Holland Road, and we think he would do a great job. And we, again, as a gesture, um, to show the, the compromise on New Church Road side, they're willing to give him the chairmanship, which I think is a big gesture. And then during the construction phase, both communities would pray at Holland Road, and Holland Road is a beautiful site, so it would be an incredible swan song, uh, to quote the chief rabbi, um, for that, uh, for that uh, synagogue. Um, if you're Holland Road at the moment, in my opinion, and, and people may differ, there are really two choices. One is you, you can stay where you are, and you know, inevitably, with the aging of the congregation um, and, and the current trends, in a few years' time, there won't be a minion, and the shawl, beautiful as it is, will be there and it will be empty. And unfortunately, over time, as we've seen with Middle Street, it becomes a, a burden, a liability on the community, because it falls into a state of disrepair. That, that's one option. The other option is to come now with, and engage with um, New Church Road and take the artifacts, the key items from Holland Road, which is really what it is, because what, what we're all about is trying to preserve memories, our connections with the previous generation. We can take those things, whether it's the, um, the Torah scrolls or the Aaron Kodesh, the Bimmer, um, the plaques, the photos, all of it, we can take and bring to the new site. We can effectively move Holland Road, which is a beautiful shawl, and put it on the best site for the Jewish community for the future. To my mind, it's a no-brainer. I mean, if you're going to go down the first route, you know, I, I, not a lot to say, really. So this is what it would look like. <laughs> <laughs> This is not Julian's company, by the way, although it says Wolf. <laughs> Perhaps we wouldn't go quite that far, but it gives you a sense of, of what can be done. It is actually become the heart of the community, the Italian Jewish community in Jerusalem. In their imagination, they were actually, when they entered to this synagogue, they felt like this is Italy. They got back to their roots, to the place they used to be in Italy, and they entered this synagogue as Italian Jews. The Italian synagogues uh, in the period of the Baroque and later on in the Rococo were uh, done by artists and Hebanists non-Jewish. Uh, the Jewish couldn't be carpenters, they couldn't create elements like we see here around, and uh, they have to receive the permit of a non-Jewish artist. Last time that Jewish people used this synagogue, it was in the First World War when the Austro-Hungarian army conquered Italy. A Jewish chaplain searched a synagogue to pray in. Someone remembered that the old lady have a great key to enter a building that used to be a synagogue. The chaplain, he was amazed by the, the beauty of the space. And from that day on, the synagogue was closed and not reopened. I remember very well 
when the synagogue was opened here in 1952. I saw a very old Ashkenazi rabbi that was crying in the entrance and I asked the president of the synagogue, who is crying there? And he said, oh, this is Rabbi Aaron Deshon. And he was the chaplain in the Austrian army. And he is the first time that he sees again the synagogue in Eretz Israel. In this synagogue, actually, you can feel, when you enter the synagogue, you can feel the life and the vibes of this community, which is still alive, almost here, the holiness of this place and the antiquity of this ark. Okay, so that's what we would like to do. We would like to keep Holland Road alive in a new site. <coughs> okay, so I'd like to switch now and talk a little bit about what we're planning to to deliver on uh, the new Church Road site um, when, when we bring this development to fruition. And just to kind of give you a bit of um, uh, forewarning, it's still a work in progress. Um, we have had one informal meeting uh, with the council, which went very well. They're very um, supportive of the usages we have for the site, but we haven't yet gone into details um, of heights and so on, which you know will inevitably um, mean that things have to, to change. But we, you know, this is part of that consultation, as I said earlier, so we're hoping to solicit your views. So what, what did we try and do? We really wanted to take a step back and ask the question, what is it that would revitalize uh, the Jewish community in Brighton and Hope? And so this is what we want to deliver. We want to build a set of assets um, which will appeal to people across uh, the age range and the religious spectrum. Um, at the center, uh, in order to provide roots for this community, we want to build a beautiful and inspiring um, Orthodox shul. And it will be, literally be at the center, and it will be, um, you know, you'll see when the uh, architects present the plans, it will be uh, very, very inspiring. We then want to build around the shul um, community assets which will allow people to keep kosher. So we want to build a, we want to have a kosher cafe so people can socialize and come and have a, a, either a kosher meat mill or a kosher milk mill. We also want to give people the opportunity to buy kosher food, um, kosher deli, kosher butcher, so they can keep kosher and have a nice Shabbat. Uh, we also want to address the issue of, kosher, of Jewish education, because I think for a lot of um, young families, uh, one of the big issues they have when they move to a provincial community is the lack of Jewish education. Now, we don't believe at the moment there's enough demand to have a Jewish free school. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. But we have uh, some ideas, some practical suggestions, which will be a stepping stone so that in the future, if we start to regenerate the community, we can then apply uh, to try and build a Jewish free school. And then finally, and also we want to provide religious, well, we want to provide cultural and communal programs. We want to give people a chance to congregate and be together and get that sort of joy of being part of a community by putting on events, and I'll talk more about that. And then finally, we want to provide uh, long-term financial stability uh, for the Brighton Hope Hebrew Congregation, which will come because there will be a number of um, non-membership related income streams which we are working on, which we believe will, will stand the community in good stead for decades and, and maybe centuries to come. So the proposed facilities. So I've, I've alluded a little bit to them. What I wanted to do was just give you a sense of um, you know, the fact that we need to be efficient with the space. We need to um, cater for what is quite a small congregation at the moment. So we need to build a shul which feels intimate when there's 30 to 50 people. At the same time, it needs to be expandable to maybe 300 people for high holidays and if we become successful in the future. And the architects will talk about how we're building um, a shul which is flexible in that way. The shul on the ground floor, which you'll see in a second, is next to the function hall and next to the cafe. So all of those three spaces uh, are intertwined. So the shul can be made bigger to the cost of the function hall, the shul can be made smaller, and the function hall and the cafe together can be enlarged. So we can have a simcha, maybe 200 odd people, we're not sure exactly the numbers yet. Um, but it's very, very clever the way it's used. The cafe 
gets used as a um, retail space for the kosher butcher, the kosher deli as well. So we, we've got to be very smart about the way we use this thing. Similarly, um, on the first floor level, uh, we have a concept called um, Work Avenue, which I'm going to talk about in a second. I'm delighted that Debbie Sheldon, who's the CEO of Work Avenue, has come down from London to be with us tonight, and she's going to help answer questions that you might have on that scheme a bit later. And I know that we're going to work very effectively with, with Work Avenue long into the future, so that's very exciting. And similarly with the classrooms which we're building, which I'll talk about more in a second, and the nursery, um, you know, there are ways in which we ne need to make those classroom spaces multifunctional. So the classrooms, uh, first of all. On the first floor, we're going to build maybe three, four, five classrooms, which St. Christopher's desperately needs. Why? It's a very symbiotic relationship. They need the space daytime during the week. We need the space in evenings to host speaker meetings and at the weekends for children's services um, and so on. So it, the timings work very, very well. It can be a very lucrative income stream um, if we can make the commercials right. And we will only do it if we can make the commercials right. But it can be a lucrative income stream uh, for the community. Um, and the, the, the headmaster, who was a teacher of mine at uh, Brighton College many years ago, um, we've been talking a great deal, and he's very favorably disposed to us. And he said that any Jewish pupils at St. Christopher's uh, can attend a Jewish education lesson on our site um, before school and after school. And any Jewish pupil who wants to do Hebrew instead of doing, say, Spanish can do that as well on our site. We're going to use that as a foundation, and we're going to invite schools in the area, state and private schools, that if they want their pupils also to be part of this, they can come along and they can partake in lessons. Um, obviously, the logistics of getting pupils from our site to their school on time will be challenging, but we believe we can surmount them. But what it does is it, it says to a young Jewish family that if they so minded, they can find a way of giving their children a Jewish and a Hebrew education which can stand them in good stead for their primary school ages. I mentioned before that I um, don't necessarily think it's, it's, there's enough demand at, at the moment um, to have a Jewish free school in Brighton. I hope I'm wrong. But this data point I think is interesting. This is again from the Jew Jewish policy research, which talks about the growth and, on growth and ongoing growth of Jewish education. Um, particularly primary school education across the UK. But there is a different story. In London, um, both the Haredi and the mainstream population are seeing enormous growth in um, Jewish school attendance. In the provinces, however, um, that's not the case. In fact, Jewish school attendance has declined. It's not declined because parents are not interested in sending their kids to school. It's declined because there aren't so many parents of young families in provincial communities because those provincial communities are dying. So we believe you have to do one thing at a time. The first thing is get the infrastructure right to allow people to lead, lead a kosher life down here and have a stepping stone. And then, please God, in a few years' time, if it's successful, we can then think about a, a Jewish free school at that point. Work Avenue. So um, Work Avenue, uh, which is like a WeWork facility, for some of you may know that company, is, is a charity. Uh, it's based in Finchley. And it offers uh, expertise and facilities for people who are either looking for, for work or looking to launch a business. So you can go along to Work Avenue and you can either use one of their hot desks or you can use one of their small offices. You can use their meeting rooms. They have printing facilities. You can, they have a great broadband connection so you can set up your PC, et cetera, et cetera. And they have a team on site that will provide advice about how to lay out your CV, interview skills, and so on. And most importantly, there's a fantastic networking opportunity. They get around 100 people a day through their door, and those people are often in similar industries, and they help each other. And people who are maybe retired will come back and will give a presentation about you know, their um, careers, which can, again, just that, that extra bit of help can make the difference between getting a job and not getting a job. So we're really excited to have the opportunity to work with Work Avenue. Um, and you know, the person who runs that for this community would be trained up by Work Avenue. We'd have ongoing access to the team in London via Skype and uh, for visits as well. And, and it really could be, it could be the thing which attracts adults to the site day in, day out. 
Our thinking is that if you've got a cafe and you have the work avenue space, there'll be a magnet uh, to bring Jewish people to, uh, to this site, and it'll become a live site, 20, not 24-7, but day in, day out. And then JW3. So Raymond Simonson is the CEO of JW3. He was going to be here tonight. Unfortunately, his wife is unwell, so he had to pull out. He has said, however, that once we've established a team that will, be, will come from across the community, from all parts of the religious spectrum and some non-affiliated people that will oversee um, events and so on that we're going to host on site, once we have that team, he's very happy to come down with some of his people um, to give the benefit of his experience. And it is a wealth of experience. JW3 has about 170 events a week on its site and has about 4,000 people come through its door um, every week. So it's a phenomenal success story for the Jewish community. Um, what we believe we can do, uh, one very, very simple thing, is we can stream their events. So whenever they have a speaker, and they've had some unbelievable speakers like J.K. Rowling, David Miliband, and so on, uh, we can stream those onto a screen which will project um, in the uh, social hall at, at the new site. So that's an easy one. And then people who are speaking, they'll be invited to come down to Brighton as well. Um, so there, there's many ways that we believe we can work with JW3, and we can learn a tremendous amount from them. They have so many um, education evenings, so many speakers, cooking lessons. Uh, they use the site to its maximum, and that's what we would like to do. So this is the big point. The whole will be more than the sum of the parts. We'll have a community on site. There'll be a residential block. We don't know how many people there'll be, but please God, a lot of the people who own flats on, on site will be Jewish people. So they will be there day in, day out, and they will use the facilities. Um, equally, when people want to drop off their kids at the Jewish nursery, they'll stay for coffee. Maybe they'll go and use Work Avenue. Um, maybe they'll stay later and visit, you know, listen to the speaker meeting that's happening that night. Or on a Thursday, maybe they'll go shopping um, at the deli and the butcher, so they have kosher food for the weekend. And all the time, they'll be using the site. Maybe they'll decide, you know what, we'll Dove and Marev, Minkra and Marev, maybe we'll come early after we've dropped the kids off at St. Christopher's for their lesson, and we'll go and do Marev. So it, oh, the familiarity with the site grows. Kids that maybe don't go to shore start to use the site all the time. Maybe they come to shore. We have a very inspirational rabbonim across this community. They will, please God, come together on the site, and then, you know, their inspiration plus the facilities can engender um, a far more dynamic community here. So please support this scheme. Please fill in the survey, that's the easy part. But please encourage um, institutions that you, you, you commune with all the time to come on board and be a part of this. Holland Road, I've talked about a lot, but, you know, it's up to the congregation. We respect the board but it's really for the congregation to decide whether you want to be part of this going forward. We believe it's a unique opportunity, so please do come on board. This opportunity will not come again. Thank you.